Dear all, welcome to NephroTube Online Nephrology Lectures. In this lecture, I will talk about insights from the Figaro DKD and Fidelio DKD trials. All lectures of NephroTube are available at nephrotube.com, the PowerPoint itself, and the recorded videos are available at our YouTube channel. You can follow us on the NephroTube group and NephroTube page, NephroTube Twitter account for more updates. Starting the lecture by this registry data that we did in Egypt for the uh, end stage renal kidney disease uh, 2020. Hypertension and diabetes mellitus are the uh, most common causes as etiologists for uh, end stage renal disease. And that's why the, the, there are a lot of care for the management of diabetic kidney disease. And we are trying to find uh, a better management for a better control for the progression in this disease, for this disease. We all know that now we have four pillars for diabetic kidney disease management. We have the old school and the guidelines, which suggest uh, metformin and lifestyle modification. Then the guideline based is inhibitor and they are based to the maximum to tolerated dose. And finally, the new guard and his guideline based, with, which is SGLT2 inhibitor. And finally, and recently, FDA approved finally renon, which is uh, a selective mineral corticoid receptor antagonist. And my lecture today is about phenyrenone and uh, the evidence of its beneficial effect for patients with diabetic kidney disease. This is my talk outline. I will start at first by introduction about albuminuria and the EGFR uh, assessment for cardiovascular risk calculation and assessment. It is well known that with uh, declining of the GFR, with more decline of the GFR, the all cause mortality and the cardiovascular mortality increases, increase. And also with the increase in albuminuria, with the increase of the albuminuria, the all cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality also increase. So, as the first graph show from the right to the left, there is a decline in GFR, while there is an increase in all cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality, and the same here for the albuminuria. That's why our new classification for chronic kidney disease is not only dependent on the uh, EGFR, but also on the albuminuria level. So we have five uh, categories of the GFR, and we have three categories regarding the level of albuminuria, less than 30, from 30 to 30, uh, 300 milligram per gram, and more than 300 milligram per gram. And when the level of albuminuria increases and the GFR decreases, the risk of progression increases, and the intensity of, uh, or the frequency of follow-up must be more with the more with, must be more in the more uh, or in the severe diseases than the less severe. Okay, so what is what about aldosterone pathophysiological uh, effects and why it is dangerous? Aldosterone can cause sodium and water retention, which will lead to congestion. Also, aldosterone cause that there is an evidence that it causes cardiac fibrosis, which will lead to heart failure, and the high heart failure will lead to congestion. Aldosterone also may cause vascular damage, which will cause hypertension and renal fibrosis, and renal fibrosis will lead to more hypertension, and both will lead to chronic kidney disease, and hypertension will increase the risk of heart failure. That's why aldosterone is a playmaker in cardiac and renal damage, and that is why a lot of studies since all time we're trying to find a blocker for the activity or overactivity or pathological activity of aldosterone to prevent uh, cardiac and uh, renal uh, progression and disorders. I will talk about the phenyrenone. And actually, we always put in comparison with the spironolactone. Phenyrenone is a potent selective mineral receptor uh, blocker, 
with less pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrotic gene expression, and that is an advantage than spironolactone. It is also potent, non-selective, but it is a non-selective neuroreceptor blocker, but it has less pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrotic gene expression. Also, regarding the risk of hyperkalemia, it is more that it is more with spironolactone than uh, finirinol, and also the risk of gynecomastia is more with spironolactone than finirinol because finirinol is a selective mineral receptor uh, binder. Okay, that's why we have now two mega trials: Fidelio and Figaro DKD trials, and the fidelity. Uh, is a pool analysis for the both trials. In Fidelity, they collect, I will show you now. We have the Figaro DKD trial. They tested for the cardiovascular events with phenylenon in kidney disease and type 2 uh, diabetes. While in Fidelio trial, they uh, tested the effect of phenylenon on chronic kidney disease outcome in type 2 diabetes. And finally, here the Fidelity pooled analysis. They collected the data from the Figaro and Fidelio DKD trials with each other's and put them in one report. So we'll cover now the insights from the Fidelio and the Figaro trials. Starting by the patient populations, both trials are double-blinded, testing type 2 diabetes patients. The average follow-up for two trials is about three years. And the most important point, the post-trials uh, tried first rasplokid to the maximum tolerable dose in all patients before started phenylenol. Regarding GFR classification, there was a difference between both trials. In the Fidelio DKD trial, they, they tested patients with a stage albuminuria or category of albuminuria A2 and A3, and with GFR from a category from G2 to st G stage 2 and stage 3. In Case of Figaro trial, they tested patients also with proteinuria of some of with uh, A3 and some with A2, but they have more patients with a better GFR than those in Fidelio trial. So to mix both of them, as Fidelity did, this is the range where both Fidelio and Figaro trials uh, involved with their patients category A, A2 and A3 for albuminuria, and actually from stage one to stage three B. So what about the endpoints in both studies? In the Fidelio DKD trial, the composite endpoint was about the efficacy regarding the chronic kidney disease. The composite endpoint was time to onset of kidney failure, sustained decrease of GFR more than or equal 40% from baseline or renal death. But Figaro trial composite in the point was about the heart. Time to cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, or hospitalization for heart failure. And regarding the second secondary in the point, they exchanged the primary in the point. I mean, in the video, the, the, the uh, primary in the point was about the kidney, and the secondary in the point was was about the heart, which is the same at, as the first end, the primary end point in Figaro. And in Figaro, the primary end point was about the heart, but the, the secondary end point was about the uh, kidney. Okay, so both of them tested tested uh, tested the same end points, but with different primary and secondary end points. Other secondary endpoints and exploratory endpoints are present in both studies. Okay. What was the result? Actually, both, stu both studies showed that regarding the primary and secondary outcomes, composite outcomes, that phenyrenone was effective in both of the kidney outcomes and the cardiac outcomes. To make it easy, regarding the composite endpoints of the heart, there was 14% risk reduction in patients received phenylenol. And regarding the kidney composite outcome, there was about 23% risk reduction in patients who received phenylenol. And if we look about each 
category of the composite its point itself not for the composite uh, for the all composite composite in the point or outcome we will find that there is a benefit from phenyrenon for every or for each point of the composite outcomes for the cardiovascular or even for the renal outcomes so what about the safety in both the studies it was documented that patients received the phenyrenon had risk of hyperkalemia than patients received the placebo. But actually, about 14% of patients in the phenyrenon group had hyperkalemia versus about 7% in the placebo group. But actually, hyperkalemia leading to permanent discontinuation was only about 1.7% from those with 14%. So maybe it is not that much, or maybe uh, we can use one of the uh, new antihyperkalemic medications with, with ferineron, but maybe the cost uh, will be the only barrier for that. But actually, it will increase the, fact it, uh, the, the probability of using of ferineron uh, because it will decrease the risk of hyperkalemia. What about the relation between ferineron and SGLT2 inhibitors? In both trials, as it is shown here in the fidelity pool analysis, there were some patients who received the phenyrenone and they also uh, were on SGLT2 inhibitors. And they got more benefit than patients without SGLT2 inhibitors. So this may be an evidence that the combination between phenyrenone and SGLT2 inhibitors may be more effective. And also, it is an evidence that you can use one of them if you cannot use the other. For example, if you have a patient with uh, at a very high risk of hyperkalemia and you cannot use phenyrenone, you can use SGLT2 inhibitor. Uh, uh, also, the other side, if you have a patient with a recurrent UTI infection, mycotic uh, fungal infection, you are afraid to use SGLT2 inhibitors, you can use phenyrenone. In this comparison, RCT, they made a comparison between the credence trial and the Fidelio trial. We know that in credence trial, they uh, used canagliflozine uh, to test the reduction in cardiovascular and renal risk in patients with type diabetes and CKD. While in the Fidelio, as I said now, they used phenyrenone. So patients from Fidelio DKD who met the CKD inclusion criteria of the credence study were included in this analysis and they compared SGLT2 to the phenyrenone. They have found about 4,600 patients uh, met the credence-like criteria from the Fidelio trial. And at last, they found that there is no difference for between SGLT2 inhibitor and phenyrenone regarding efficacy for the cardiovascular outcome and kidney outcome. And there's another evidence that you can use both of them at the same time, or even one of them, according to the uh, comorbidities or risk factors that you have in your patient. So summary, summary and my thoughts. The assessment of cardiovascular and kidney failure risk must include both EGFR and the urine albumin creatinine ratio. Abnormal urine albumin creatinine ratio in patients with GFR more than 60 or equal 60 is considered as CKD. Phenyrenone is effectively reduces cardiovascular and kidney failure outcomes in patients with CKD and type 2 diabetes. Should phenyrenone be used in combination with SGLT2 inhibitors? Yes. Should phenyrenone be used with novel oral potassium binders? Yes, but the barrier may be the cost. And finally, thank you for watching this lecture and see you later.